Good morning, dear students. Today's topic of discussion is beta-lactam antibiotics. These groups of antibiotics are called beta-lactam antibiotics because they contain a beta-lactam ring in their structure. Usually, there are four types of antibiotics which can be termed as beta-lactam antibiotics available in the market. The first one is penicillin. Second one is cephalosporins, the third is monobactam, and the fourth one is carbapenem. Beside these four, one more group of drugs are also existing in the clinical practice, but they are not beta-lactam antibiotics. They are called beta-lactamase inhibitors. In 1928, Alexander Fleming at St. Mary's Hospital, London observed a contamination of a culture plate of Staphylococci by spores of a species of Penicillium mold. Fleming noted that the bacterial colonies surrounding a large colony of the contaminating mold had become transparent and were in a state of lysis. Hence, Fleming named the antimicrobial substance penicillin as it was obtained from the genus Penicillium. Later, several researchers investigated for the therapeutic potential of penicillin, but pure form of penicillin could not be obtained for further systemic therapeutic use. It was in 1940 that Chain and Flore could confirm the work done by Alexander Fleming and obtained impure penicillin as a brown powder. Further research at Oxford University could establish the effectiveness of penicillin against staphylococci and streptococci. But it was not until 1942 that penicillin could be produced in sufficient quantities. In 1945, Alexander Fleming, Chain and Flore shared the Nobel Prize for the discovery of penicillin. Its natural source is Penicillium notatum, but its commercial source is Penicillium chrysogenum. The basic structure of penicillin consists of a thiazolidin ring. Here A attached or connected to a beta-lactam ring here B to which a side chain R is attached. The side chain determines many of the antibacterial and pharmacological characteristics of a particular type of penicillin. Penicillin G is the only natural penicillin used clinically. This is also called benzyl penicillin. Two enzymes, here it's been shown in this figure, act upon penicillin. One is penicillin amides, which cleaves penicillin to form 6-amino penicillinic acid and penicillinase, which splits penicillin to form penicilloic acid. The presence and structural integrity of 6-amino penicillinic acid, that means the action of penicillin amides, is essential for the antibacterial activity of penicillins. Whereas, the split product penicilloic acid indicates that the penicillinase enzyme is responsible for destruction of the structure of penicillin and is also responsible for various allergies and hypersensitivity reaction produced by the penicillins. Now in this picture you see the drug molecule is having different 
penetration, level of penetration on the gram positive and gram negative bacteria. For that, you have to see the structure of the cell wall of the gram positive bacteria, which at the outside found by tachoic acid and the peptidoglycan layers are there and beta lactamase are present with it. Whereas in case of gram negative, there is the presence of porine channels and a lipopolysaccharide structure is there at the very beginning. So it's very difficult for penicillin-like drugs to penetrate the outer membrane. In gram-negative bacteria, you will see a periplasmic space and the beta-lactamase is present in the periplasmic space which is responsible for the destruction of the structure of penicillin. So, this penicillin, the structure, it has to traverse through this entire pathway so that it can bind with its target penicillin binding protein present in both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. But due to the structural configuration of penicillin, it is possible for it to penetrate most of the gram positive bacteria, but it is not seen in case of gram negative bacteria. So penicillin G or benzyl penicillin is basically a narrow spectrum antibiotic and penicillin usually acts by inhibiting cell wall synthesis of a bacteria and this is a narrow spectrum antibiotic. So ultimately benzyl penicillin or penicillin G is a narrow spectrum antibiotic having bactericidal action. Go to the next slide and we'll see the mechanism of action of this. Penicillin group of drugs. Now most of the beta lactams including penicillin interfere with bacterial cell wall synthesis. Chemically the cell wall is known as peptidoglycan which is a mess of peptide and cross-linked sugar polymers lying just outside the cytoplasmic membrane shown in the previous slides. The peptidoglycan is common to both gram positive and gram negative organism and is predominant in gram positive organisms forming almost 90% of the cell wall. It is thick with layer after layer of the ingredients. The cell wall is critically important for bacteria because of its tensile strength. This strength allows the cell to maintain its intracellular osmotic pressure in environments of variable tonicity. The tensile strength of the bacterial cell wall resides in its peptide crosslinks which is the target for the action of beta lactams. In gram negative bacteria, an outer membrane of lipopolysaccharide is located exterior to the few layers of peptidoglycan. In gram positive bacteria, the lipopolysaccharide layer is missing and many more layers of peptidoglycan are present. So, if you want to Recapitulate this, this concept once more, go back to the previous slide and you will see the structure of gram positive and gram negative bacteria and you can correlate with this description. Because the cell wall of the gram negative organism is composed of lipids, it hinders transport of 
hydrophilic substances such as nutrients and waste products. To enhance uptake of hydrophilic nutrients and excretion of waste products, gram-negative bacteria have pores composed of proteins called porins. I am again going back to the structure of the gram-positive and gram-negative so that it will be easier for you to understand. In gram-negative bacteria, lipopolysaccharide acts as a selective barrier for the entry of antibiotics. Small hydrophilic drugs such as beta-lactams use porins to gain access to the cell interior, while macrolides and other hydrophobic drugs diffuse across lipid layers. In the case of gram-positive bacteria, antibiotics, hydrophobic or lipophilic gain entry inside the bacteria by passive diffusion. The assembly of the cell wall takes place in a series of steps originating in the cytoplasm of the bacteria and ending outside the cytoplasmic membrane. The glycan part of the peptidoglycan is composed of repeated N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramate connected to beta-1-4 linkage. A pentapeptide is attached to the glycan. The rigid peptidoglycan cell wall is formed by cross-linking of the glycan chains by peptide chains to form continuous two-dimensional sheets. The initial stage of peptidoglycan synthesis take place in the cytoplasm. A membrane lipid carrier transport that is N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuraminic acid across the cytoplasmic membrane and the saccharide units are then linked in sequence to form long chains of alternating disaccharides. The final stage of cell wall synthesis involves cross-linking and this cross-linking reaction which occurs outside the cell membrane catalyzed by a number of membrane bound transpeptidase enzymes transferred to as penicillin binding proteins. Beta lactams bind to the transpeptidase inhibiting the cross linking reactions and preventing cell wall synthesis. Beta lactam antibiotics kill bacterial cells only when they are actively growing and synthesizing cell wall or rapidly multiplying and thus producing bactericidal effect. The mechanism by which these drugs are actually causing uh, different types of resistance are already discussed in the introduction of antibiotics but just for your benefit I can tell you that inactivation or destruction of the antibiotic by the beta lactamase enzyme produced by the microorganism is a very common reason behind this antibiotic resistance and there is a certain bacteria like Lepsiella, E. coli, Pseudomonas, Staph, they are responsible for synthesis of those dangerous virulent enzymes like extended spectrum beta lactamase which are destroying the structure of beta lactam ring by acting on the B, that, that means the, at the site of action of uh, site 1, that means where the penicillin enzyme acts. And hence we are seeing that there is a high level of resistance to different drugs like penicillin, different types of other penicillin, ceftazidim, estrionum, carbapenum, 
monopenem. So, for all we are seeing different types of resistance. Structural modification of the penicillin binding protein is also uh, a common cause of different types of resistance. Similarly, if uh, there is a decrease affinity and binding of the plasma, I mean penicillin binding protein, this will also lead to different types of resistance. Efflux of antimicrobial agent, which I termed as drug vomiting from the microorganism, may also participate in this uh, reasoning or the mechanism of drug resistance in case of beta lactam antibiotics. An impaired permeability, which I have mentioned, is different for different bacteria, is depending on the cell wall of the bacteria and hence that is also responsible for the resistance among the different bacteria. Now let us come back to the structure of penicillin and the basic classification of penicillin to end the initial introductory lecture of beta lactam antibiotics. So if I have to take one group from the main four penicillin, cephalosporin, monobactam and carbapenem, then I will select penicillin as my first choice. If somebody is having a hypersensitivity reaction to penicillin, that means as a clinician you are losing one of your most lethal weapon. So the basis of the classification of penicillins are limitation of penicillin G. Natural penicillin or penicillin G which is basically uh, can be termed as uh, obtained from a natural source uh, can be termed as uh, unit of one unit of penicillin. That penicillin has a lot of limitations. Uh, but before going to the limitations, let us clarify what we mean by the term one unit of penicillin. Most of the times penicillin is expressed in terms of unit. So one international unit of penicillin is the penicillin activity contained in 0 0.6 microgram of crystalline sodium salt of penicillin G. Whereas one milligram of pure penicillin G sodium equals 1667 units and 1 milligram of pure penicillin G potassium equals 1597 units. The activity of newer semicentric penicillin is expressed in milligrams. Mostly the penicillins are classified on the basis of its limitation though it can be classified on the basis of duration of action, on the basis of its spectrum, on the basis of um, its uh, sources uh, whether it's getting from the natural source or the semi-synthetic or synthetic. So there are different ways of classifying it but I will give preference to the classification of uh, penicillin uh, due to the limitation of penicillin G. So what are the problems with penicillin G? Penicillin G is given via injectable route. So it's the biggest limitation. Patient wants to take it via oral route. So uh, invention started to form a orally active penicillin and that penicillin is known as phenoxymethyl penicillin or penicillin V. That is also termed as Pentit uh, and uh, uh, the brand, brand name is Pentit and that one is uh, commonly used in the clinical practice. Another limitation of penicillin is its half-life is pretty small around uh, 2 hours uh, to uh, 3 hours so uh, multiple uh, dosing injectable dosing is required to, to overcome that uh, in some situations we have invented a repository penicillin where the penicillin is actually prepared with some uh, form of uh, local anesthetic agents so that penicillin is gradually released uh, and maintaining a therapeutic plasma concentration for quite a long time. And such penicillins are 
benzathin penicillin and procaine penicillin the third penicillin which we are uh, saying in in our clinical practice is because of the again limitation of penicillin and the limitation is the penicillin structure can be destroyed by beta lactamase enzyme hence we have to invent some drug which are basically penicillinase resistant penicillin and those penicillins are cloxacillin dicloxacillin methicillin oxacillin and methicillin was the first number of this group so this is the third way by which we are classifying penicillin the fourth one is called amino penicillin and amino penicillin is basically nothing but the amoxicillin ampicillin and bacampicillin they are known as extended spectrum penicillin mostly the spectrum of penicillin is restricted to gram positive bacteria but once you have invented these ampicillin amoxicillin the spectrum extended from gram positive to gram negative bacteria even when we are taking the injectable preparations like piperacillin carbenicillin then we have included especially in case of piperacillin we have included pseudomonas aeruginosa and it is probably the most extended spectrum penicillin we have in a market as these pen, uh, piperacillin is having action on the pseudomonas aeruginosa which is the most one of the most uh, difficult bacteria to kill we used to term it as anti pseudomonal penicillin next comes the uh, carbenicillin um, ticarcillin those are also extended spectrum penicillin and anti pseudomonal penicillin so this is basically the way by which we have classified penicillin group of drugs in my next presentation we will come to describe the different uses its adverse drug reactions and the problems which we encounter in everyday practice while prescribing penicillin group of medications so thank you very much for your patient hearing